In the Amazon Basin, there are many road construction and improvement projects being planned. 75 of them were examined for their economic viability. Collectively, they represent a total investment of 27 billion US dollars. The assumption often made is that expanding road infrastructure will promote economic growth. But upon closer inspection, some of the roads would have a net negative impact on the economy. Actually, a lot of the roads would have a net negative impact on the economy. A team of researchers found that of the 75 planned road projects that they looked at, 45% of them, representing 55% of the total length, would cost more to build and maintain than they would generate in the benefit of reduced travel times over the next 20 years. Cutting these economically unsound projects would save $7.6 billion of investment funds, which is to say nothing of the environmental and social impacts. With roads comes deforestation. Just cutting these uneconomic projects would save forest area about half the size of Belize, 1.3 million hectares. How did all this get overlooked? Roads are built for many different reasons, not always for the purpose of benefiting society. It can be simply local demand. People want a road, so they build a road, and the broader economics aren't factored in. It can be an obscure political reason, like a state government trying to use up their budget so they can justify a continually high budget in coming years. It could be corruption. A construction company might bribe politicians for the right to build or upgrade a road, not necessarily because the road is needed, but because it can secure the money at the expense of the taxpayer. So the researchers looked into these projects to get the economic picture, to see which projects were actually good ideas. Generally, the most complete way of doing this is to collect all the ways a project can impact people, like the direct costs of construction and maintenance, or the direct benefit of reduced travel times. Then quantify everything with an economic dollar value. And do the same with indirect benefits, things like increased access to healthcare and education, or costs like loss of carbon storage and loss of surface water. This way, everything can be compared on equal economic grounds. You can add everything up and see whether it's overall a good or bad idea. Anything with a net negative value uses up more resources than it generates, and you can toss them away. And if any projects compete, see which gives a higher net positive value and go with that one. But all this can be expensive, and it can be especially difficult to measure the value of non-market goods and services. For example, we know that better access to healthcare helps people and has value. It might be easy to count the number of people affected, but difficult and expensive to quantify in economic terms the exact benefit. So what these researchers did was just try to measure the magnitude of change for each of the factors. For example, how many people would have greater access to healthcare because of the road? How much carbon would be released because of the road? How much surface water would be lost? All the socio-environmental factors were combined into a socio-environmental score. And this can be viewed alongside the net economic value. With this method, an answer may not be dictated outright, but it's a cheaper analysis and it's still very useful. For example, let's say this road project gives this much economic benefit for this much socio-environmental damage. This road gives this much economic benefit for this much socio-environmental damage, and so on. From left to right, you go from most efficient project to least in terms of economic gain versus socio-environmental damage. Past here, it's essentially a double cost. You're losing economic value and causing socio-environmental damage, paying money to damage the environment. There's very little economic justification for these projects, and they should probably be cancelled. If we fill in the rest of these 75 projects, what this lets us see is that you can get the majority of the benefit at a very small amount of the socio-environmental damage. From here, you'd have to double the damage to get only 12% more of the total economic benefit. Or you can get all the economic benefit, but you'd have to take a pretty big socio-environmental hit. This kind of analysis is a more economical way to help decision makers decide which projects are worthwhile, or at the very least help people think critically about why the road is built and whether that project benefits society.